Hello and welcome to another video from Double Rail. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the new Hornby Class K1. It's uh, 62027 and this is in uh, late Bior livery. Um, this particular locomotive was uh, built on uh, August 31st, 1949 uh, in Glasgow. And uh, its last shed it was based out of was 52F, which I think might be up and around Scotland. And um, it was withdrawn on March 31st, 1967. And unfortunately, like all but one of these locomotives, it was uh, cut up in uh, no on November 30th, uh, 1967. So, uh, this particular locomotive um, was uh, widely used and it was a very useful and versatile uh, steam locomotive. And I'm um, looking forward to hopefully it being a very good model. So, um, it's, uh, without any further ado, uh, take a quick look at it. Now you will have noticed uh, I'm actually opening a box and the reason for this is so many people have asked me to do this um, I've, I've given in and decided to do it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do um, two videos for each locomotive that I take a look at and when a new loco comes in um, I'm going to give you a quick look at it so you can see it running on the test track uh, seeing it in the box and getting a kind of look at it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it in and take uh, some better shots of it on the um, main layout and then kind of give you more uh, prototypical information. And I'm also going to give information of what kind of rolling stock you would pair with it. Uh, so some people have asked me to do that. All right, so let's uh, take a quick look. And uh, the reason I'm looking at this locomotive today is it's uh, Frank Hornby's uh, birthday. Um, so I thought it was only fitting to take a quick look at a fine example of uh, Hornby's uh, steam locomotives. So um, what we'll do is uh, show you what this is. Uh, it's uh, or 3243A, uh, 62027, and you can see there it has the same thing like so. It's DCC ready, it's in the uh, BR late livery uh, with the appropriate crest, and uh, it does have the usual packaging with the top down view of the loco. That, and then on the back, uh, there is some uh, information. It's a 5P6F, which means its uh, power rating is uh, 5P for passenger, uh, 6F for uh, freight, so it'd be a class 5 for passenger, class 6 for freight, and there's a big whole splurb here about um, the history of it and all that, and there's also a technical diagram, uh, which is kind of cool. Alright, so we're going to flick it open, oops, sorry about that, and uh, we're going to flick it over and open it up, so very easily. It's, uh, usual Hornby packaging. Uh, so we'll take the sleeve off, pop it out of the very reflective outer uh, piece there. You can see there's quite a bit of static with it. Um, usual instructions. So we'll discard that box. Give you a quick look at the instructions. So uh, they've gone back and looks a bit to like a flat single sheet of paper. Maybe they just haven't folded it. Um, Folks in China folded it wrong, but hey, that's all right. Usual maintenance stuff. Running in, looks like the nope, this is didn't tell you about running in. Yep, and uh, brake rods and whatnot. And of course, on the other side, where to oil it and all that good stuff. We'll take a look at that later. A more detailed look. So, um, cut the uh, extra detailing there and the look like so. So I'm going to pull this out, let's have a quick look at what kind of detailing you get. Yeah, uh, it's like NEM couplings, it's a few detailed bits for the buffer beams and brake rods and a little bit extra. So that's uh, always a plus. And let's take a look at the loco itself. So I'm going to pop that up that way. It's uh, covered in a plastic sheeting and just in case you don't know what this is for it, so you can lift it out of the loco without touching it. Um, Alright, so I'm going to use this because what I'm trying to do is try not to touch the locomotive at all if I can avoid it. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I, I try to not touch these as much as possible, manhandling it regardless of how clean your fingers are. You can always get those oils onto the plastics and that's never good. So it looks like it's got uh, some pretty nice cool details there. And this doesn't look like it moves, but 
the rest of it's looking pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pick it up, put it on the test track, and I'll manipulate the camera a little bit so you can get a better look at it. All right. Okay, I thought we'd take a uh, quick look at the instructions. Um, actually, nothing uh, new or, or strange or startling. Um, it was uh, folded funny. I'm guessing um, it, it's supposed to be folded this way. Um, but whoever folded it didn't want to uh, mess this up for some reason, so it's folded sideways. Um, but yeah, basically it has the usual uh, general information that it's DCC ready. It has some uh, running tips, but there's nothing really about running in. It has uh, usual routine maintenance. Tells you that it's got the uh, sealed uh, long life uh, motor, which doesn't require any maintenance. And uh, does say that if uh, after considerable use, that the motor might need uh, replacement. Um, usual chassis information, lubrication is just the, the chassis, and a little bit about the uh, locomotive bodywork having a printed process rather than transfers. Um, the back here shows you where the brake rods go, usual stuff about television suppression. And um, on the uh, other side has like the uh, lubrication points, uh, nothing unusual there. Gives you the uh, details where the accessories go, as you can see there's some uh, tender buffer beam accessories, some uh, buffer beam and uh, valve gear um, accessories as well. Gives you uh, some basic uh, assembly, disassembly information. Uh, mainly has that one of those uh, fine plugs for the uh, DCC socket, I think, is in the uh, tender. Gives you an option for close coupling. This is not for running, though. This is just for display purposes. Uh, and then it tells you how to remove the body, uh, two screws. And it shows you that the DCC uh, socket is in the, um, in the tender. So there's nothing on here about running in. Um, we're going to run it in anyway. Uh, for like at least 30 minutes, 15, 30 minutes uh, in each direction. Um, but I'm not quite sure if these uh, new motors need running in or not. I might uh, send Hornby an email and, and find out. But uh, right now, we'll just go ahead and run, and run it in a little bit and see what happens. So uh, next what I'm going to do is to give you a few close-up shots of it on the uh, test track here, show it running. And then um, in the next video, we'll uh, show it to you guys in more detail with some prototypical information as well. Okay, so uh, here we have the uh, K1 and uh, kind of up close on the test track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it really slowly um, back and forth on the test track and I'll pan the camera around it here in the center as well uh, so you can go look at some of the details. Um, nothing uh, strange or startling, it's got the uh, usual high level of detail that you'd expect from Hornby. Uh, it's a pretty nice locomotive so We'll let you guys uh, take a look at it here on the video, and then we'll uh, do some uh, testing with it.
Okay, so uh, there you have it. That's the uh, Hornby uh, K1. So this is just a quick look video. So in the next video we do on the K1, we'll show it to you in uh, more detail, show it to you running on the layout, and we'll uh, give you some prototypical information like what kind of uh, rolling stock to pair with this. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, first look, and keep an eye out on the channel for the uh, next video about the K1, and um, hope you enjoyed it.